Welcome to Two Poor Artists, where we're poor at keeping Christmas traditions, but mostly we're poor at making art. I'm Isaac. And my name is Benj. So, <clears throat> today, we're draw dr dr drawing. We're drawing. Yes, yeah. that is what we do. Not whatever we're just attempting to say. Now, we are going to be drawing today our Christmas... Well, maybe not our Christmas tradition. Well, Just you know. The title Christmas Traditions. Christmas Traditions, because. Whatever that might mean with our drawings. In this festive time of the year, it is good that we have traditions. Mm -hmm. We have traditions for, you know, many, many wonderful things. We have yep. traditions for, you know, things like where we eat and, well, no, I mean, like. Christmas, what do you eat on Christmas Eve and when you decorate the trees and what you do in your front yard and you know on Christmas Day Christmas if Eve I have a tradition of where I eat it's Denny's because they're open. Yeah, see see I don't understand that. Like I've never eaten out on Christmas. I don't think. Like you gotta stockpile food and eat leftovers and Yeah, but well I mean it's just it's just you do it because like your siblings are all married and doing things with their wife's parents or whatever. And you're just like, well, everyone's busy. And I, it's just me and Micah sitting here trying to figure out what to eat. The yeah. only people not doing something with people. That's when you make like a batch of spaghetti and meatballs and you guys eat them together. No, nope. you go to Denny's. You could do that. See, in my family, we have traditions for, for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, even how to wear clothes. That's how it works in our family. Well, that is... Um... Apparently, you visit the manger. No, I don't. Oh, see? This is a house of equal quality to the house from two weeks ago that we drew. Oh, that house that we definitely drew. What a lovely little house this is that represents, you know, our generic dwell place. Well, this is exactly what my house looks like. Mm. Just with the front door on the front. Yeah, in the middle. Definitely not a garage yeah, in the middle. Door. Houses definitely have front doors in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle and the front. In Arizona. Yeah. Have you ever seen a house? Uh, like, it would be creepy if you saw a house where the door was like... Like even, well, I guess some do. Like, like in the in the back east and the Midwest and like places where the garage isn't part of the house, it's mm -hmm. like next but to the house. Then have it in the like because I built like a shed not too long ago, and like I put the door like on this side and like a window on this side, you know. So it's like there was no center of the house, and like the door and the window were like equal distance. I don't think most rooms have a door in the very center. Yeah. Because then you can't put anything in like the center of yeah, the room. Of the, like, like it's, the, yeah, you know. it's weird. Because like you're, you want a hallway. So unless you have like enough room to put like a whole room on this side and a whole room on this side and then a, and then like a center hall, mm -hmm. that would be the only reason. Yes. But I also have a chimney. Oh. I don't have a fireplace. Yeah, but so that, how can Santa come? Yeah, exactly. If you don't have a chimney. It's important to at least make one of your Christmas traditions building a chimney. Yeah. So that even if you old... like just install it for Christmas. Uh -huh. You don't have to like have a fireplace or anything. You just have to have a chimney. Yeah. It's basically just like a hole the in your hole roof. That goes to your... <laughs> yeah. That leads towards the Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It can be as as bad as that is made it get down. <laughs> blow a hole in the roof once a year yeah it's gotta have like hope it doesn't rain or snow and look at that traditional looking brick so is this part of your traditions you building the chimney every every no year? I, it just needs a brick chimney mm -hmm. no, that's that true. i install and i cut a hole what's, what's and then more... i cut a hole through the attic mm -hmm. yeah it's <laughs> just like a first story it's like, it's like a long <laughs> tube that leads from your roof just to make sure everything from the outside ends up on the inside yes. of the house. <laughs> yep, that's yeah, what you want. It's drafty and <laughs> it's, it's wet and it's, you know, cold, but mm -hmm. but Santa at least can yeah, give it come presents. down. Yeah. It's it's cuz listen, whatever Tim Allen movie you may have seen, if you don't have a chimney, can Santa really bring you gifts? No. I don't think so. And if you 
like I think you just don't believe in Santa if you're not getting gifts. Yeah. If part of your tradition is not putting up a chimney, then you don't believe in Santa. Yeah. Now, honestly, the best thing Santa can bring you is a fixed roof. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, those those years yeah. are the best. <laughs> Because it's the, you know, nobody likes undecorating for Christmas, you mm-hmm. know, like taking apart the tree and yeah. putting all the decorations in boxes, precisely and going up to the roof it. and disassembling the brick <laughs> chimney and yeah, patching, and the, patching hole the hole and the, ce- in the roof in and the, roof the attic, attic and the ceiling. The second story. Uh, <laughs> no one really likes yeah. that. Yeah. You know. I don't, we never grew up in like a big city, but do you think like in the movies, you know, every movie, how there's like one of those like trash shoots that goes down the side of a building mm-hmm. and it's basically just like a big tube slide. It's all the way down to the ground floor. Yeah. You think those are real? They must be. Right? Movies don't lie. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've learned in life <laughs> is that movies are all true. It's a slightly... Windy day, okay. Wind, yeah, yeah it's, it's, just, a, it's it's windy. It's, wind. it's the gust that's blowing the but tree it, it, and going down the chimney it into your living room. Has a star on it. Yeah, just like all Christmas which trees, which I color in because otherwise I can't draw a star. If your Christmas tree hasn't grown a star yet, you know it's not ripe. Yeah, no, and it's not ready that, for Christmas. That, that star fruit on the top, yeah, exactly, that grows. The glowing <laughs> star that grows at the top of Christmas trees. Yep. when they're ready for Christmas. Yes, but see, I'm not just drawing a lovely. See, House this is scene. just our drawing from two weeks ago. <laughs> but, like, visited. but like before we started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. The tradition is this. Um, and I realized I didn't really give myself much room. So it's going to be, he's, he's, I'm drawing a guy and he's going to be doing sweet moves <laughs> up here. It is Santa. But he's got sweeter moves than Santa. No, this is a different tradition. Buddy the Elf. This isn't this isn't a tradition that happens on Christmas or Christmas Eve. Okay, this guy, whoever he is on the roof, is terrifying me because he's just staring up. This is like one of those people that's like waiting for aliens to abduct them. Type. I do know the type. What is with his that's forked tongue and chin? This is just how it is. He's. Well, there are you'll few... understand soon enough. It's also oh. weird. Okay. So just a second what you just don't draw anything else okay. what you just drew yeah it's one of those images that's like you can look at it two different ways right like okay so the inside of the mouth is clearly on the top right what you know those images where it's like if you look at it you see two oh. pictures. you know look at the bottom if the okay so like you're saying if this is the inside of his mouth and this is the lip. Yeah. And that's the nose. Yeah. And look at the eyes. They and can then, go both ways. Yeah. That's creepy. It is See, creepy. But obviously, this is my traditional nose yeah, first. Yeah. Like when you, when you go any further, I'm sure you'll you'll correct it. But it could be like his eyes like, are like way almost, sticking out. Over. I almost want it to be that way. <laughs> I, might, I might do that. It's so creepy looking. Uh, I'm doing it. No, no. I'm doing so it. So he's like, oh, gosh. He's, so like, he's totally an alien now. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, it looks so much weirder than I expected. Uh, don't worry. Hair will fix it. Hair, hair will fix it. Hair covers a multitude of sins, <laughs> but there's a multitude. <laughs> oh, See? so good. See? Oh, he has like, he has like <laughs> a lip on top of his top lip. <laughs> Third lip. No, that's, the, that's the nose. Oh, though. that's the nose. Okay. Yeah. See that? That helps. I mean, but man, this guy. This, this guy needs. Creepy. This guy needs a mustache. <laughs> oh. But like, I, I'm sorry. I saw this now because it's so. <laughs> it does a. This is like in every movie where an alien is hiding on Earth, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, well, I'll just put a mustache on, and no one will be able to tell." <laughs> It's like clearly your head is the shape of a like a well, the, le- the letter C. The the eyes still kind of look like they're going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's all a perspective thing. Like he's he's clearly facing down but looking up now. See, you you change the whole perspective of my drawing now. <laughs> so I'm trying to like figure out how this is gonna. Okay. I'm not sure how you were gonna so, do it before. Where well, it was... yeah, I. 
<laughs> that is questionable. Whatever it is, his head is going to be so much bigger than the rest of him. But it's it's quite interesting how it worked. <laughs> it it definitely worked. Like, look at yeah. that. It, it totally worked. Exactly how I was planning. Mm -hmm. oh, what is that? It's like a... Oh, a guitar. No. Do you get serenaded I don't, by the Christmas alien? I don't really know the difference of looking-wise of a guitar in the instrument drawing. Drawing a I'm sure ukulele? people will uh, be disappointed in that fact. A banjo. No, it's not a banjo. Yeah, Banjos it's are clearly terrible. not a banjo. I mean, the instrument I'm drawing has like a million strings. So I don't know how. A million a strings? A million. Literally a million. You're drawing a violin, right? No. Like a fiddle. Yeah, like a, a fiddle. A fiddle is a violin. The only it's, difference... Okay. It, the the difference is how you play. Exactly. If you didn't know that there are not two different instruments, a fiddle and a violin... <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's how it oh, works. No. So see, it actually works this way now that you're drawing it. But yeah, a violin and a fiddle are the same instrument. The difference is fiddle is a verb. You fiddle a violin. And that's yeah why it's called But I don't really know what that means. I know I knew that was a fact. All I really you know what I know? I know every fact that I know about fiddles comes from Little House on the Prairie. Mm. And Pa playing his fiddle. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. Where the other the other hand comes down here, doesn't it? Like wraps around. Unfortunately like for a, your sake. Also like a, we'll we'll forgive wherever this creature <laughs> puts its other arm because of then, its head. And then he's like bending over. This guy's real big. <laughs> like, what is that? He's like a cricket now. He's like a cricket man. No, he's... Oh, I see. He is he's just bending. Like... Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's a leg. A normal looking leg normal coming human out leg. of it. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. He's just... <laughs> See, your drawing would have been worse if it was facing the other way. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, I was going to have him bending backwards. That was my original yeah, plan. See, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and he was going to be like over here, and the fiddle was going to go up and not be like see, over. This, the... this confirms my, my theories okay, about so all how those. Is, how is this hair? My theory about all those drawings that can go both ways is that there's just clearly a right way, mm -hmm. and you'll, you, you see the right way for you. What, so whatever your... Yeah. But then that that suggests that truth is relative. Only and I don't think that's only in those drawings. Okay. It's like what you need to see at that moment. For example, this is what I needed to see. Apparently, How I needed to see. What is so this, his head? This is a hat. Now. He's kind of like. And then he's got he's got hair. Like the hair is gonna fix everything. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna fix this. <laughs> <laughs> he's been hit with a hammer but it's like on the forehead it's just like how it's dented no like, don't fill it in don't no it's... Well, you can just fill it in <laughs> what could fix it well like what could someone wear in between their nose and their eyes <laughs> there isn't supposed to be anything in between your nose and your eyes it could be a pair of like glasses that are like too low on face you know or like a scarf that you tie between your eyes and nose. <laughs> like a headband that slipped <laughs> there's nothing i'm looking at your face right now and i'm like there's not even room between the yeah, eyes the nose, like the nose is in between your eyes yeah <laughs> there isn't a... <laughs> glasses might be the only thing but <laughs> what is it like a monocle make it a maybe it's a monocle a single monocle that, like, fell? <laughs> well, he is leaning over the roof. He, he, he... So you're saying, like, I fill this in? <laughs> no, I'm saying you leave it. <laughs> because there's nothing... <laughs> I think this is just what he looks like. Yeah. He has a weird... <laughs> head. What the heck is your Christmas tradition? So, as I'm sure happens with everyone, on the first day of Hanukkah, you get a fiddler come on your roof, and sing a Christmas carols. 
Oh. Like, that happens yeah. to you, right? Yeah. The, Every... the Jewish fiddler that shows up yeah. on the roof. To sing Christmas carols. Exactly. The, f- the Christmas fiddler on the roof. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not only that, that's my favorite Christmas movie. Yeah. The only the only no, other it... he scenes is the tradition song. Yeah. You know, I mean, because you tradition. can't you can't be a fiddler on the roof without singing the tradition song. It's true, right? So, so he alternates like a yeah. Christmas carol and then the tradition <laughs> song, and yeah. then the Christmas song, and just back and yeah. forth. That's got to be interesting. Comes, comes on your roof, plays, and then he just vanishes onto. The next house, I, I presume. So he's like the Hanukkah version of Santa, but musical and has no gift other than a song. Yes. But he also plays Christmas yeah, music, Christmas. which makes it a Christmas Mostly tradition. Christ- yeah, it's Chris- Christmas he's tradition. Seen, he doesn't but he sing, shows up. He doesn't sing Jewish songs or Hanukkah songs, except no. for, for, except for the, song, the which I don't know if that's really a Jewish song. I think it is, because he talks... Like, it's about Jewish things. Yeah, he talks about the prayer shawl, I think. Like, he's talking about Jewish traditions, which relate to... Yeah, like, Hebrew school is mentioned in that song. and Yeah. But it's a Christmas yeah. tradition. Christmas traditions. Yeah. Even though it starts on Hanukkah. Yeah, it starts on Hanukkah, Hanukkah, but it's a Christmas tradition. Because yes. everyone knows that the first day you're allowed to start singing Christmas carols is on Hanukkah. Everyone the does. The first day of Hanukkah. Yeah, the first day of Hanukkah. Yeah, that's when Christmas carols... It's really rough when Hanukkah's like late <laughs> yeah yeah but this year this year hanukkah just started the other day so we're mm-hmm. good yeah we finally perfect. get to listen to christmas we, sh- we should be so you're telling christmas me this guy was like on your roof yeah the other day yeah like on wasn't he on yours no i have different christmas traditions oh <laughs> well I, like i didn't think this was a choice no well, like, <laughs> like it's not like i called him up and asked him similar but different okay I mean, because see because you've only got one fiddler Right. You know, let's just finish your drawing and we'll get to my Christmas traditions. I mean, there's not much. Tradition. Not much more to my drawing. I'll just... Tradition. If I spell the word Christmas right. Well, it's just the name of your Lord and Savior. And the word tradition, right? Yeah. Good job, Benj. Did you know... This guy. That some people get annoyed when you write Xmas, but that's actually just the the Greek, like, for Christ. I have heard that before. And then mass just means worship, so. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, I've never been too upset with that. Unless you're just too lazy. It's just a lazy way of writing Christmas, really. Yeah, but like I've seen, I've seen like pastors' notes where they'll do X instead of Christ, just because you need to make the notes short, like like their personal notes. Is pastor shorthand is bad as doctor shorthand. Sometimes we, I used to so do like I I do the slides now, but I used to do the slides um, at at our old church, and sometimes I have to do the slides for the pastor, mm. and they just like hand me their notes, <laughs> and it would be like. This tells you when to do the next slides, and it's like I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like wow. this is all shorthand. Like they they would use the theta sign theta. for like theology. Like anytime they were just like talking about theology, they would just like draw the theta symbol. Wow. What complicated? And then they would wait. Was this one they, of those? Because like you know, there's medical doctors, and that's really, in my opinion, the only real person who you can call doctor. Mm-hmm. If you have like a scholarly doctor and they're telling you to call them doctor, then you shouldn't yeah because they're just being they're pompous just, but, yeah but was this like a a pastor who had like a doctorate in theology um because that would explain the shorthand yeah i don't i don't think so hmm but maybe he, he wasn't he didn't. didn't he didn't brag about it so yeah, he probably see, didn't yeah but the shorthand <laughs> is a dead giveaway sometimes yeah sometimes you know it's like an, ins- an aspiring doctor turned pastor mm-hmm. if you've heard that story once i'm sure you've heard it a thousand times I think this roof needs a little third dimension. I think anything to make us not look your guy straight in the face <laughs> helps. Like third dimension. Yeah. Well, there's a crack in the roof there. That's quite a shame. Yeah, it happens. Good thing it lined up perfectly with the side of the house, though, so you can mm-hmm. hardly even tell. And then, uh, like, I'm there's... trying to see your guy the original way now. 
and it's impossible. Well, like, yeah, he would have he would have been back. like bending backwards yeah. with the fiddle going up. Your guy looks like he and the fiddle was just gonna go into non-existence. Your guy looks like so I didn't really want to draw most of the fiddle. Yeah, well, no, of course, but your guy looks like he he was up on a roof mm -hmm. and he fell off the roof and he landed on his fiddle and it <laughs> like, Dent, like dented, dented in between yeah. the nose and eyes. See, like even after I drew it this way. I still see it the original way because, like, that's how I always draw my guys. Uh -huh. So it's like to me, it just looks like there's a non-existent <laughs> guy, and then there's a there's a I can thing I can, <laughs> growing out of. I it. can see it again <laughs> if I try. Like this is one of your greatest drawings because it's unintentionally <laughs> one of those you know one of those optical illusion things. Like mm -hmm. I can see your guy like looking up. Yeah, he's like a ghost of. <laughs> The ghost of what should have been. Yeah. Which means it's time for my drawing. Yes. As you'll see. Let's you'll... see. Let's yeah. see what you're going to draw. I'm quite excited for this. You want to save your drawing? So that in the future, when they're writing history books and the archaeologists are digging through the old hard drives that are buried in tombs. The Two Poor Artist Tomb. Two Poor Artist Tomb is going to be underneath our uh, our hotel. Oh, is it? Yeah. I plan on being buried under our hotel. In a pyramid, a black and white pyramid. Is there any other kind? No, there's not really. You know how cool a black and white py pyramid would look? Think about it. If the world had more black and white things, it would just look cooler. Like, it would look like a comic book, you know, like a, like a, like a manga. Or if you're, you know, one of those people, a manga. Like a black and white comic book. I guess if you're old, I could say like a newspaper paper comic strip, and uh, that would all make sense to me too. But I think you know, if you had more buildings, like we talked about mm -hmm. this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about our houses, yeah, if they were just like black and white drawings, mm -hmm. like from a distance you couldn't tell if it was like a drawing of a house or like a big billboard, yeah, yeah, like or a real house. Imagine our pyramid that's under our hotel. Right. It's like in the basement, like carved, <laughs> would it carved be like, out in the catacombs. Would it be like an upside down pyramid or like does the tip of the pyramid somehow touch like the, like, you know, because you had to like get into the pyramid yeah, from. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I'm okay with it being an upside down pyramid as long as we can be buried in the very tip at the very depths. Right. Yeah. And, and then it's sealed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we're buried with our cats. Our cats. Well, we won't have any cats. But uh, yeah, by okay. cats, I mean like friends. Oh, okay. Like you know, like they're a cool cat. Oh. Kind of. A, you know, I I, I see that slang. Yeah, as know. long as we don't have any actual cats. No, they'll be forbidden. Because I mean, especially if they're going to come with us to the afterlife, I I don't want any yeah. cats coming with no, us. No, no, no. Just our friends, our art, our art, our fans. That'd be it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're uh, if you're a fan of the two artists and would like to be buried with us <laughs> please submit your request <laughs> to two poor artists at gmail.com like, do we wait till they die and then they're just buried <laughs> next See, to us if it's or... a pyramid thing if it's a pyramid like, because thing because that's not how the egyptians did it no but like the egyptians did one thing that i think was wrong and they didn't make it voluntary Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, you're the wife of the pharaoh. Time to go into the tomb. And like the hundreds of slaves. Yeah, see? Voluntary. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee that <laughs> by the time we're famous enough to mm -hmm. have the two poor artists well, hotel. Okay. I, I have a, this a is, question. This is turning morbid in who, my head. Who's quick. like an actually famous person? Like Ryan. Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds. Would people oh, in a heart sign time. up <laughs> they would. to be buried with him? Yes. Like so they could serve him in the afterlife. Well, I don't know if that's the reason they would <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> like probably like there's crazies out there. Like 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 obviously none of that's true, right? Maybe but like would people <laughs> I'm I'm just curious. Maybe what really needs to happen is just because like those it, like if you <sighs> If you like, if Ryan Reynolds announced that, mm -hmm. there'd, be like, find... there'd be like there'd be like ten thousand people who immediately are like, "Yes, bury me with you, Ryan yeah. Reynolds." And then, but then, like when he actually died, and 
are alive. There'd be like how a many, hundred. How many people there'd would be, like? There'd be some. Be like, oh yeah, I was serious. No, a lot. Because they'd be, you know, what people <laughs> would do for fame. <laughs> You know, like they'd make a big deal about it, like the walking them in and saying goodbye mm -hmm. and sealing them, and they'd be Ryan Reynolds, yeah, casket. It would be, it would be gross, and but like, see, we need to find because Ryan Reynolds wouldn't do this, right? No, we need to find someone who would, like Nicholas who would? Cage. Nicholas Cage, Nicholas yeah. Cage would do this. Yeah, let's. Nicholas Cage him. would be buried with like his dinosaur head, his T Rex skull, and his. He would. So, Nicholas Cage, since you're watching this, yes, obviously. 100%. Or one of you knows Nicholas Cage. Yeah. You can get I him mean, to watch yeah. this. And now Nicholas Cage is watching this. Yeah. He wasn't before, but now. No, he but now he is. We said it. Yeah. And that's how it works. So, you should announce this. Mm -hmm. Like, we won't, we won't join you. No, but that's you, not what we're no, saying. No, we're not saying we want to go. We'll draw your we'll draw a portrait for your funeral. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do a drawing. Yeah. I still feel like like Nicolas Cage does weird things, but like he's kind of cool about it. Yeah, I feel like this would be kind of cool. It could. Be. <laughs> I feel like you need someone who's like a bit more eccentric, like eccentric out there? and okay. like mean. Okay, so mean who's, about their who's, eccentricness. Who's more mean and eccentric and yet famous enough? You know, to like literally ask people to bury themselves with them. Yeah, like. You know what I mean? Like that's like that's Elon kind of Musk has the eccentric part down, right? But, but he, he wouldn't, wouldn't do this. He wouldn't. Do no, it. He's, no, he's he might like as a joke say it, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't he would follow never through. Follow through. No. Yeah. So who's like? Like I feel like I don't even know the people. Yeah. Like know of the people that are like this. Because the thing is, it would be it would it would actually be bad for PR. That's the problem. Yeah. Because most people, because like I could see some people like Beyonce or someone doing this. Oh, she's but it would creepy. be, but it'd be bad for PR. Yeah. So who's already like? It'd have to be like Nick Cage, if he like really fell off the deep end. Yeah. You know, like. So Nick Cage, if you ever like become super villain evil, yeah, hit us up. Yeah, it's like that's well, the problem. Who are the super <laughs> villains of the? Yeah. the because they like to keep it secret. Why? Why are all the super villains in real life so secretive? I know, right? Like, be they, like in the movies, like yeah. big base. Big secret fortress like, that everyone knows where yeah, it is. Like Megamind. Henchmen that like he, dress with your like initials on them. Like according to Megamind, he says the difference of a villain and a supervillain is presentation. Yes. Why do we have no supervillains? Yeah, what's the deal with that? Like Like we have all these people that are like trying to take over the world and do evil things. We know about it. It's on TV. Yeah, but they need like a figurehead. But, yeah. You know? They need like They'd the like, guy we can root for if yeah. you're evil. Not that we would root for him. I'd like to think, but like for all the people who are like fans of evil, mm -hmm. you know, like they need like someone to cheer yeah. for in the streets as he flies over yeah. and is like and, eccentric. And then it's like, and then when you like blimp. arrest him without killing him because yeah. obviously you don't kill the super. No, you try to debilitate him because he's yeah. got such a following. Right. You arrest him and everyone can cheer and be happy that the super villain was defeated. Yeah. Except for all the minions who secretly plot his return. Yes, and, then, but, and he always comes back. Always. There's always back. a break. Yeah, exactly right. See, the world needs some good old fashioned supervillains. Mm -hmm. Saying, yeah, but, but like we're not willing to become no. that. We'll just be this. Well, like we'll be the guy. You ever watch a movie? Like I was watching the first Captain America movie the other day, and it has mm -hmm. like Red Skull. Right. There's always some artist who's like called in to like paint the portrait mm -hmm. of the oh, supervillain. Yes. If you, know? you want to be a supervillain, yeah, we will do. We your drawing, will draw, it. and it will scare people. Yeah. Yeah. Like. In different ways than you might intend, mm -hmm. but it will not be pleasant, which is you know right on brand, right for, on brand for, for you, you super villain, yeah. you. Yeah. See, and then and then and then you can ask people to be buried with you. Yes. As a Christmas tradition, yeah. because that's what we're talking about every today. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. You can get more people to sign up. Yeah, like they open the vault, the tomb once a year, <laughs> pour some more fanat fanatics in. Yep. People that are still worshiping your greatness. Yeah, see, we'll see, do this also, but here's how it'll work. We'll be buried in the tip of our underground upside down black and white pyramid. Right. Not a sentence I was planning on saying today, but it makes <laughs> sense. Um, but here's the thing. Anyone who volunteers to be buried with us mm -hmm. every christmas yeah 
they'll like be led down in the escalator, I guess, that leads to our tomb. <laughs> <laughs> and at the bottom, they'll just be like rooms full of counselors. <laughs> or like, what's the deal? <laughs> Why yeah. is it that you want to be buried alive with the two four artists and they mm -hmm. just like rehabilitate them right and teach them art yeah <laughs> it's it's a two-step program mm -hmm. the rehabilitate yeah. and then they teach them and then the counselors art. take off their masks and it's us yeah that's right we faked yeah. our death yeah we did <laughs> see we're the kind of people who would fake our death <laughs> we're those oh yeah of course you know? i'm always disappointed when a celebrity like dies and you're like ah. oh yeah like this they... is this is the one that would fake their and then death. they didn't fake their death like um i always said michael jackson when he died mm -hmm. like for like 20, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. He was the perfect one to mm -hmm. fake his death. Yeah, to just like have like cuz he was just about They know. even they even like soon after his death. Yeah. They had like a I remember concert. talking about this like 15 years ago. Yeah. They had like, huge memorial service mm -hmm. in like it's like some stadium, yeah. you know? And it was like this is the perfect opportunity mm -hmm. for him, for him to like, like rise back. up out of the coffin and give yeah. a concert, you know. <laughs> and he was mm -hmm. just about to go on like his biggest tour ever, and you're mm -hmm. like, see, yeah. Like, this and it's is, like, like this, it this will just kickstart the tour, yeah. That he exactly was going right. to go like, on he, the back from the dead tour, you yeah. know. Like, oh, yeah. see, that's the level of fame I aspire to. <laughs> and it's like obviously that's artist. bad PR. It is bad, but PR. that's fine. No, because he's Michael Jackson. Yeah, see, he could have gotten away with it. Yeah, you know. The whole burying a live thing, you need to be more super villain. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because he's like weird and eccentric and probably not a good, great guy from what I understand. Like all celebrities. Yeah. But he's not like no celebrity is super villain status. Right. Yet. No, no, not yet. Hey, we can hope for. And we'll draw your portrait. Mm hmm. And Nick Cage, since you're still listening, um, we love you. But you could you could stop listening now. Yeah, we understand. Can, the, the part about like, you is over. We. Before I draw anything, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to see what's going on. You don't want to see what's about to happen. We're not going to draw you. No, we have a rule. We respect you too much. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, I mean, especially ever since that movie. Yeah, the movie where he made fun of himself. Yeah, great. Or National Treasure. Or both. Oh yeah, National really. Treasure is pretty great. Anyway, time for me to draw Christmas traditions. Um, let's see. And for mine, I am going to start inside the home. Oh. Is this like the cardboard box do you live in? Hey, I've upgraded. <laughs> it's now a plywood <laughs> pile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, impressive. It's like that mattress you used to have as a kid. <laughs> yep. The... The, the box spring. That was that like shattered. Yeah, <laughs> it was just just, a, just it was like, broken wood <laughs> just a in a pile. pile. Of sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's I was the bed ever. And I don't even think your parents knew, or else they would have had mercy on they, you. They probably would have got me a new bed. But I didn't even know. I thought this is just what beds feel like. Yeah, that's, that's the saddest story. <laughs> Growing up, I used to think that a pile of sticks was a bed. <laughs> It was the most comfortable thing I could find. <laughs> That's like the story you tell the mattress salesman so they give you a good deal. Dude, mattress salesmen are the worst. They are. Have you ever oh, been terrible. to a mattress they store? Are. Okay, no joke. I I hate... Maybe that's too harsh because you're not <laughs> to hate. But no. I hate <laughs> people trying to sell me stuff in right. general. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the pushy kind. There's three types. In my opinion, mm -hmm. there are the insurance salesmen. Right. Maybe there's more than three now. I'm thinking of all the people who tried to sell me <laughs> stuff. There's the insurance salesman. There's the car salesman. That's a famous mm -hmm. one. Yeah. There's the people in the mall who stop oh, you at yeah, booths yeah. and try to sell you mm -hmm. a whole story about those that are, sometimes. Those are bad. Pretty bad. You have the people who come to your front door and try to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have mattress salesmen. Yes. And the and worst of all is, is the, the mattress mat salesman. Yes. I remember I one time went to a mattress store. I'm so sorry. And like they were so hard on trying to sell us a mattress like I, I don't even remember why i went there but i did not buy a mattress because like it was the worst experience i ever had then i looked at the reviews and all of the reviews were the same thing like 
going in there was the worst experience I ever had. One person was like, I went into this mattress sales, this mattress store, and the guy was trying to sell me a mattress so hard. By the time I left, he told me I hated my kid because I wouldn't buy them a mattress. Yeah, see, that pretty like, much sums it up. That's that's the the level these mattress salesmen will go. It's rough. It's terrible. You know? Like, mm -hmm. it's true, though. Like, you go into a mattress store and you're like, I just want to, like... I want a mattress that doesn't cost as much as a car. Right. Like yeah. that's the first yeah, decision. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Like you have to, yeah, because like they have the ones in the back, you know, mm -hmm. that like remind you of the princess in the pea store. You're like, why did it have nineteen <laughs> layers? And they're mm -hmm. like, well, each one is a level of the tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah. you're like, I'll take the the single layer <laughs> with the memory foam mm -hmm. because I'm pretending i'm not poor you yeah know, like right. something you know like, but oh gosh the pushiness in the mattress mm -hmm. showroom and they're not mattress even showrooms to begin with are creepy yeah there should not be a whole store dedicated to come and lie down while i talk mm -hmm. to you about what you like it's creepy yeah it, it's like the first store that should be run mm -hmm. by robots right you come in you lay on every mattress and you tell the robot Bring me, bring that one to my house. Yeah. You know, and they, it's also like mattress stores aren't worth going in anymore because one, they're the pussiest. Like, I will never horrible people. A store again. Yeah, I went in once, never again. And then, two, they're like the worst deals. Like yeah. you look up mattresses online, and it's like you can get a better mattress for like a quarter of the price than like any mattress like you go to a mattress store and it's like why is this like normal spring mattress like a thousand dollars i know right and you're like i could go buy a memory foam mattress for like five hundred dollars it is quite concerning so i'm looking at your acorn next to your um <laughs> fireplace not, a, not an acorn <laughs> But a pretty decent uh, 3D fireplace job there. It's going to have to make up for all the other mistakes I make. Oh, the, the acorn has a face. <laughs> it's not an acorn. It's an acorn on a string oh, with a face. Gosh, his nose is so out of place. Now. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's like, not, it, that's. Like that's his ear at this point. That like there's no way that's not his You're ear. Right. It has to be an ear. <laughs> There has to be a second one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit out of place still. <laughs> it's still not great, I'll admit. But like the nose, as we established with my drawing, <laughs> it's in between the eyes, not <laughs> nearby one of the eyes. Yeah, I'm not proud of this thing that I've created <laughs> at all. I'm not even sure what to call it. But I mean, I'm assuming at this point it's an elf. Um, and who knows what an elf act looks like? I mean, no one's ever seen one, right? It's my experience. We know they apparently have real big sweaters. Yeah, it's Christmas. Christmas traditions, Ben. Versus your <laughs> middle-aged Jewish man <laughs> with the backwards face. Is, is that what he I, was? <laughs> I don't even know. What do elf pants look like? Like shorts, aren't they? For some reason, I think we established we've never seen an elf. Yeah, but in the movie, where most of our knowledge of <laughs> Christmas traditions come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have like they have like shorts so they can show off their stockings. Because yeah, exactly. stockings are a big part of elf culture. Yeah, so we have like stripes. Striped stockings. Yeah. What do you, what Christmas traditions do you have though? I think like, the people like at home would for, be for the real lives. I mean, other than the the man who comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he comes. Uh, I mean, for me, on Christmas Eve, is when we do our stuffs. Yeah. Okay. So the part that I'm there for. Yeah. Other than the the lonely. Mm -hmm. Weigert boys at Chinese tradition. 
Yeah, on Christmas Day, we don't usually do anything. That's interesting. Have you like? Is that always been the case? Like your whole life? No, like when we were kids, we used to wake up and gifts. But like as adults, we don't get gifts because we're adults. And like sometimes we might hang out with one. Like sometimes we'll go and have lunch or something with Joe and his family. Sometimes I'll do something. You know, it's like sometimes there's some sort of get together uh, for a meal. And so, like, a, a couple years, we got together for, like, breakfast at Joe's house. And we hung out until like, supper time. It was more like brunch, I guess. And then me and Micah went and ate at Denny's. Hmm. Uh, because we were going to go to a Chinese place, but uh, that was too busy. And, and so we went to <laughs> See, Denny's. <laughs> I guess that is kind of the, like, traditional. You go to a Chinese restaurant on Christmas. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, basically we don't have any like actual Christmas traditions. Okay, how about growing up? Did you have any growing up other than Well, we'd wake up, opening presents, open presents, read the Bible. Well, usually read the Bible first. Yeah, do the important stuff first. Then we'd open presents. And then, I mean, growing up I usually went to your house. Like no one does anything on Christmas Day. We used to do stuff on Christmas Day like up until like lunchtime well yeah we're like okay so my christmas growing up was always yeah we'd wake up in the morning and we would do christmas presents we'd have Mm -hmm. to wait upstairs and my parents because we'd wake up before my parents traditionally and they'd they'd like the night before gotten all the presents under the tree Mm -hmm. like they didn't put them out until christmas right and then we'd all walk downstairs together and look at the things and then we'd have like i don't even know what we'd eat for breakfast we'd get something little to nibble on like Mm -hmm coffee like we had a friend who made us like a coffee ring mm-hmm. um and we'd have something to eat and then we'd open our stockings first you have to open stockings first Do you have stockings growing up yeah we still get stockings on christmas eve but you didn't get any presents because you're an adult yeah but the stocking is different it has uh it, we get like pjs and breakfast cereal you still get pjs yeah, that's usually. But we we like almost always got our stocking Wait, Christmas you said PJ's Eve. PJ's breakfast cereal is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, we almost always got our stockings Christmas Eve. There's like stuff, so like we could sleep in the new PJs on Christmas Day. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, and then we get like breakfast cereal. We uh we didn't often have like sweet cereal. That's yeah, true. That's why you still like life, life cereal so much. Cinnamon life is the best cereal. Yeah, see, that's the that's the words of a man who and never then, grew up eating Lucky Charms and Fruit Loops. Uh, those those aren't even good. Those yeah. those are less sweet. Your parents than cinnamon did, life. Your parents did a good job raising you. I'm pretty sure those cereal. have less sugar than cinnamon life. See, I think of cereal now not as like a breakfast food. I think of it as like a dessert. Yeah, you know. Yeah, which is why Cinnamon Life and Raisin Bran are like the two best. They also have like the most sugar. Like it was it was like weird because it wasn't like you had to eat healthy cereals. It was just like the the super like desserty ones, but we always got them on Christmas. Like fruity pebbles, stuff like that we always got as a Christmas gift. <laughs> We also always got, like, candy, but I don't really eat candy. Like, I still have candy from last Christmas in my room. See, I don't really like most Christmas candy. I like uh, gummies. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pretty much the extent. I basically eat gummies right away. Yeah. And then anything else, like the chocolate or whatever. Like, chocolate sits around for a couple of years before my wife finds it and eats it. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how I eat chocolate. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll be, like, playing a game, and I'll notice one of the pieces of chocolate in the room and I'll eat it, but yeah, it's like a desperation sort of thing. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I haven't eaten all day. I've been playing video games. I should probably eat something. And there's chocolate there. That will tide me over for a couple hours. For my birthday, I had that one night and I was in my room and I was like, I don't want to go downstairs. And I was like, well, there's some M&Ms over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like them. <laughs> That makes me feel slightly ill, but 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's worth noting at this point of my drawing that you and I grew up next to each other. Right. Right. Yes. So yeah, there's a house in between us, but there's there's yeah, we, we grew we up two, two houses two away. houses down from the time we were like seven. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, I think eight, somewhere around those young impressionable ages. Yep. You didn't know my name for a while. Yeah, because you apparently introduced yourself as Christian. Well, that's what you do when you're a Christian. You say <laughs> hello. I'm a Christian. Yeah, and I, they... I I don't remember why, but for the for a good while, like we went to Isaac's birthday party and gave him a card that said "Happy Birthday, Christian," which I do not recall because like we thought his name was Christian. My parents must have like shielded me from this. They're like, <laughs> they don't even know him. <laughs> like, I mean, that was like that was like one of those weird t- birthdays because it was like soon after we met. And, like, it was just, like, everyone in the neighborhood was yeah, no, invited. That was, like, back because when I you had... Because like, had just moved into the that neighborhood. Would, see, that's the odd age as a child where you're, like, your friends are, like, your parents' friends' kids. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, every every kid that your parents know is immediately your friend. Right. Because, I don't know, I guess that's how parents think you yeah. make friends. But, yeah. Like, now, like, mo- everyone else who was at that birthday party... Mm-hmm. I haven't seen in 20 years. Right. Like, know? that was, like, the first and last time yeah, exactly. for a lot of them. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, uh, then I re- learned the true meaning of friendship. <laughs> yes, the guy that didn't... <laughs> we were probably the only ones that didn't know your name. <laughs> that's how you... That's, <laughs> that's how you found them. Yeah. But, uh, the like, point... Like, I don't know how it happened. I... My assumption is we came up and said, what's your name? And you said, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Like, that's the only... I'd like to believe that I was that bold as a child. (laughs) The point I'm trying to make, though... (laughs) Uh, The point I'm trying to make is that we... Although I don't remember the man that you remember from your Christmas traditions. Mm -hmm. It's not not that hard to remember. It was like... Yeah, it was just like up on your roof on Christmas. Which uh, well on Hanukkah. Hanukkah, yeah. See, like it it just ends. So, what I do remember though, are the ghosts mm-hmm. of fiddlers past <laughs> who would come to my house, and the, the more I thought about, it, as you were drawing, I was like, it's probably just that neighbor we had <laughs> who was like in between our houses, mm-hmm. and like oh, yeah, you know how obsessed he was with the fiddle, right? Yeah, I mean he practically played it all the time. Yeah, like morning to night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oftentimes on his own roof. Mm-hmm. Or on other people's roofs. Yeah, like apparently <laughs> I'd say I knew that about Hanukkah and you. But I, I assumed he also went to your house. See, what I didn't realize though is that it was probably him and his like band of miscreant oh. followers. You know, that makes sense. Doesn't it though? See, that's what I'd like to believe. And he probably found my house. I, I still live in the same zip code, unlike you. Yeah, see? So yeah, he I moved, probably found my house. I moved out of range of the, <laughs> the fiddler. And, you know, he um he used to come over. This See, this was Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Yours was Hanukkah. Right, day of yeah. Hanukkah. This was Christmas Eve in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He would come and, like, you'd be you'd be upstairs. It mm-hmm. always happened when we were all upstairs, right? And right. you'd come downstairs, and all of a sudden there'd be like this merry band of fiddlers, mm-hmm. past and present and future, <laughs> right? You know, just like in the living room, on top of we, we didn't. I want to. I want to make this very clear. We didn't have a fireplace, right? But there was a fireplace involved. Yeah, yeah of in course. This Christmas tradition. He would bring. He bring it with. He brought him. his own fireplace and he would fiddle and it would be like a whole production mm-hmm. like you know you'd go through the go the goes the fiddler the ghost of fiddler's past and mm-hmm. it would like And it would like, uh, 
viewers, you may have noticed that we paused. <laughs> it's because we just got a message that OBS crashed. Yeah, the thing we're but, recording this with. But it's crashed. still not crashed. It's running and recording still. So. That's right, computer. You can't stop <laughs> us no. from telling <laughs> Christmas traditions. Yeah, it's true completely true. Christmas traditions, traditions that happen to us. As children? And aren't lies. Why would we lie? I don't know. I'm just saying. It's... Where was I? Oh, yeah. We'd come downstairs and we'd have to listen to this every Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. This is why we eventually started hanging out with you guys. Oh, right. Like, we would come over to your house on Christmas Eve. Yeah, because they were like, already done. We had, two, well, no, like, we had two options. It was either stay at home and inevitably go. Everyone would end. Because, you know, when you have a two-story mm -hmm. house, at some point, everyone goes upstairs. Right, yeah. Like, you know, like the kids are playing upstairs. Mm -hmm. Someone's taking a nap. Someone has to go upstairs to do laundry, and it like, like clockwork. Every Christmas Eve, we'd we'd all be upstairs and we'd realize, mm -hmm. like, oh no, we're all upstairs. That <laughs> means <laughs> downstairs, and then you'd hear like the orchestra warming up, mm -hmm. like in the beginning, you know, that yeah. like screechy. Somehow, it's the same everywhere sound of the three ghosts of fiddlers. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it, the Christmas fiddlers, right? And, and, and every year, we'd all sigh a great christmas eve sigh and then we'd go downstairs to inevitably hear the the unfortunate and then they'd all just fiddle and mm -hmm. fiddle and fiddle and then the lights would go out and then all of a sudden they'd be gone this their fiddles were really quite <laughs> great looking yeah and it looks like they're holding rulers in the other hand this one wore mittens. <laughs> Don't ask me why. What's the uh, S and the F and the P stand for? See, I've wondered for years. I know that it's Fiddler's Past, Fiddler's Present. Mm -hmm. And this one just had a, a Fiddler yet to come. I always thought this was like some weird fire department, but no. Mm-hmm. But what's the S? You know, I've thought about this literally my whole life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't and know. Is it like an elf and a Santa see, and a ghost? See, like, like this, Just picture for a moment the Christmas tradition mm -hmm. of these guys. And I know, I like, I get the whole fiddle thing. Like, it's a tradition. Right. But like we said earlier, traditions that are forced upon you are weird. Right, yes. You know, like when your parents are like, here, wear this, the Christmas jammies. Like, mm -hmm. I never, ever would wear Christmas jammies. But they're like, mm -hmm. but it's tradition, so you like yeah. do it. And you're like, eh. Or and when you, you wear get Christmas... buried with the Pharaoh. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> tradition, right? It's rough. In our home, this is Christmas Eve. No one, no one likes to be forced into tradition. Yeah, so neighbor that we grew up with pierre <laughs> this is quite disturbing because now i think about it pierre didn't look like this guy this guy looks like santa you know mm -hmm. pierre definitely didn't look like this i don't even know who the heck this was <laughs> they didn't even look right. human this must have been pierre mm -hmm. you know under the sheet right you know you know how sometimes he'd go around with sheet yeah <laughs> you know what i mean but like christmas eve was always like a a rough tradition mm -hmm. time. and then like you spent the rest of christmas eve night just like thinking about what just happened <laughs> it's like you know in a christmas girl like you get haunted by any kind of something shows up in your house and you're like what mm -hmm. the heck do i do with this but anyway, yeah. Christmas tradition. We probably shouldn't have given him our keys to our house. You know, the more I think about it, the more it all makes sense. Yeah. Because... And like, like when I moved into my new house, I probably shouldn't have sent him the keys forwarding, to my house. Yeah, and that forwarding and... Yeah, see? <laughs> but like, you know, when you... Well, that's the problem. You give your neighbor like a spare key because you're like, well, if I lock myself out one day. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to keep giving it to the neighbor if they're not. <laughs> yeah, they don't live next anymore. Yeah, but it's like... It's tradition. It became tradition. Yeah. Like this, I can't. My parents still live there. I hear this still happens at their house. I actively mm -hmm. avoid their house on Christmas Eve, right? And go to your house on yeah. Christmas Eve, because I hear on at my house every he Christmas. I see my family, and I'm just like, "How was it? <laughs> How was the you know the the impromptu 
Twizzlers of Christmas concert. Oddly mm-hmm. enough, never played the tradition song, though. Oh. Oh, see? To save that for the first day of Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really more of a Hanukkah song. Yeah, yeah. No, they... This, this, by the way, I'm drawing them, like, the end of the performance right. after the second encore. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because, you know, there was always two encores. <laughs> so you'd always, you'd always it's over and then oh no you forgot first on court <laughs> right and then they play it and you're like finally we can go do something normal and then second on court mm, that was just first and then court. and then they just stand there like this <laughs> until we all went back upstairs <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd come back downstairs and they'd be gone right you know christmas traditions are weird i guess is what mm, i'm really trying yeah, to say I mean, um whether it's it's why i avoid making traditions yeah see because I like, once you I like tradition, traditions. you're stuck with it. I like tradition. No matter how that weird it gets. I'm I I think what we can really say here is don't force people to have traditions. They need to just come about naturally. I, I say just don't have traditions. No, see, it's not I worth like, the risk. I like traditions, but I don't like the ghosts of Christmas impromptu fiddling concert. But see, the problem with traditions is they always become forcing someone into tradition. Like, what's the tradition that we that we do often? We go to zoo lights in Arizona. The zoo puts up Christmas lights and everybody walks around and looks at Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. That's a good tradition, right? But having to do it. No, I mean, you know, like, like, like wanting it's to. It's a good thing. That, if doing it's a good tradition. Like, if you do something at Christmas time and it's just like bad, you're like, well, we don't have to do that again. If it's good, you want to do it again. And that's when it becomes a tradition. Right? I think uh, things should on purpose be done every other year. So you're... But for like, like a... But not like, like for like a... But, but like not as a, a rule. biannual Christmas tradition. Yeah, but like not as a rule. But like you, you say like, oh, we did that last year. So let's do something else. Unless we can't think of something else, then we'll do it again. Yeah, I mean, I guess... Because that, then you, because I'm just saying traditions become dangerous real quick. You know, <laughs> like you talked about zoo lights. What happens when they just don't do zoo lights? Then what? We had to like you know, round up animals and, <laughs> and, yeah. l- and put lights on them because it's become tradition. You can't break tradition. That's true. That does get dangerous. I've never thought about it like that. What happens one year when the of christmas don't come we're gonna have to step into yeah. the like we're someone has to, to step into that yeah, role like you, you have know? to like there will be one yeah and they'll be like wait but it's tradition mm-hmm. oh man you think that's how this started yeah you think you think he wanted to be <laughs> the, the fiddler <sighs> yeah this mystic fiddler See, this, this is clearly this is making sense now right like yeah traditions are dangerous mm. someone did it in his house Man, that Growing makes up. so much sense. Yeah. So I guess if we can really give you a good piece of advice, you can either follow Benji's advice, which is sad, which is just never have traditions. Yeah, it's too dangerous. Or you can go with mine, which is just be really careful. Think through your Christmas yeah, traditions. But, uh, I'm like just those saying. of you, those of you who are like new to life, <laughs> like you, you know, you just. You just had kids, yeah. or you just got married, and you're like, yeah. we're going to like, do that's this. That's the only time you can break off tradition. Yeah, like, like a major life event yeah. change? Because because otherwise you're stuck. Yeah. So, like, if you have some really bad Christmas traditions, have a kid, yeah. and you can change it. Right. If you have kids, and you've made some really bad Christmas traditions, it's, Ooh, it's, yeah. what, it's what dangerous. Could, there's, you're you've, stuck. You've... you've, you've you either cause yourself a great ordeal. Grandkids. You have to wait until grandkids come, yeah. don't you? Or or See? just to, I mean, once the kids move out, you're allowed to stop doing traditions. See? So kick out your but, kids. But uh, but that's still dangerous because if the kid ever comes back, They'll you have to do it. tradition. Like again. Like yeah. they have so you have to like you have to you have, you have to, if you have a kid and you have a tradition you don't like, you just have to make that kid not like you. Mm-hmm. So that when they move out of the house they you won't to, want to you come have to back. Make that for decision. Christmas. Which one's more important to you, the kid or the tradition? Yeah, because like bad traditions, they, they, they kids, stick. They, are your kids really worth it? 
or is it so bad you've mm-hmm. got to you know cause a rift between the yeah. both of you? Because once they because if they move out and then they come back, if they like you and come back on Christmas, yeah, that's rough. tradition happens until but they have their own family. I think honestly, what we can really sum this video up in is um, if you have a neighbor who plays the fiddle, Mm -hmm. move before it's too late. Or at at very least, don't give them a key to your house and entertain their weird fiddle-related traditions that somehow involve you and your Once it happens once, it's done. Yeah, and if you don't, if it happens a second time, if you don't say anything, because we've never, like, I've never talked to my, we never uh, talked to him about it. No, I've I've never talked to him at all. Yeah, see? I don't even think I've ever said hi. Not once, but this is... <clears throat> I just send him my keys every time I yeah, move. <laughs> I know. Nate, you're stuck. Tradition. <laughs> we I... gave him it once, twice. Have a Merry Christmas, and whatever Christmas traditions you celebrate, hopefully they're more traditional. See you next time. Bye. Do you, do you see what I did there with the word traditional and traditions? Yes. Okay, bye. Bye. As always, we're surprised you made it this far into our video. There's no way we could possibly ask you to subscribe to this atrocity, so we won't. We would say share it with your friends, but it's probably better for wasting your enemy's time. We're probably not going to get any better, but we will keep drawing. See you next time.